We are going to start our look into specific organic compounds by discussing those which only contain carbon and hydrogen. We already talked about how these are named. We use the suffix ane when it's all single bonding, en where there's a double bond present, and ein when there are three bonds connecting two carbons. If we think of a variable n as the number of carbons, we can find a general molecular formula for all simple alkanes that looks like this. Alkanes equals Cn H2n plus 2. Makes sense? Each carbon has four bonds on it, and any bond that isn't connected to an adjacent carbon is connected to a hydrogen atom. So let's start discussing how these guys react. In substitution reactions, we react an alkane with a halogen, usually just a bromine or a chlorine, and one of the hydrogens on the alkane gets swapped for one of the halogen atoms. An example of a relatively simple substitution reaction would be the reaction between bromine, Br2, and ethane, C2H6. You can pretty much swap out any one of the hydrogen atoms for a bromine atom. One important thing you need to know about these alkane substitution reactions is that they only happen with UV light present, as in they will not react in darkness, and also that, even with UV light, they are very, very slow. Alkanes can also undergo combustion, which you know as burning. This doesn't produce any organic products, only water and carbon dioxide. We'll use ethane as an example. 2C2H6 plus 7O2 reacts to produce 4CO2 plus 6H2O. This reaction occurs when there is plenty of oxygen. With limited oxygen, instead you'll get incomplete combustion, which produces carbon monoxide and carbon instead of carbon dioxide. In general, remember that alkanes plus oxygen react to produce carbon dioxide and water, and alkanes plus limited oxygen react to produce carbon monoxide and carbon and water. Sounds simple enough? Then let's move on. Alkenes are nothing but an alkane with a double bond in between two of the carbons. Because of this, they have slightly less hydrogens attached to them, and are represented by the following general formula. Alkenes equals Cn H2n. The most important kind of reaction that alkenes undergo is addition reactions. In an addition reaction, the double bond that sits somewhere inside an alkene is broken into a single bond, and some more atoms get added to the new alkane that we'll get. What kind of molecule exactly we end up with depends on the reactant we use. We're beginning with addition of an alkene and hydrogen. We use platinum and heat as catalysts for this particular reaction. Since it's the addition of hydrogen, this kind of reaction is also called hydrogenation. We're going to be adding this most simple alkene, ethene, and some hydrogen. This reaction is super duper simple, since all we end up with is an alkane, which is ethane. So the double bond is broken open, and two hydrogen atoms get added to the existing carbon atoms, giving us one molecule of ethane. When we react alkenes with halogens, halogenation, a similar thing happens to what you just saw. In fact, so long as you switch the H atoms for the halogen atoms, it's really the very same process. Halogens are things like chlorine and bromine. No catalyst or special conditions are needed for halogenation to occur. Let's look at the reaction of propene and chlorine. This final molecule that we end up is none other than a haloalkane. Because it has more than just one atom of chlorine attached to it, we need to call it 1,2-dichloropropane, which is a bit of a mouthful. The next kind of addition reaction we've come to is where we react an alkene with water. This is called hydration. This can't just be any water though, it needs to be acidified water, which is why we use the symbols H2O over H plus to denote it. Mixing any alkene with acidified water forms an alcohol as the product. What we're going to look at now is the reaction between a simplish alkene, which is but1-ene, and acidified water. The H2O is being split up in this addition reaction. Part of it, an H atom, gets added to one carbon, and the remaining part, 
the OH, gets added to a different carbon atom. That's all you need to know about to be sitting at achieved level. But it's a little more complicated. We have something called major and minor products that are discussed in a future video, so bear with us, and for now focus on the mechanism of the reaction. There's one more addition reaction for you to learn, and that's the addition to a hydrogen halide. A hydrogen halide is something like hydrogen bromide, HBr, or hydrogen chloride, HCl. They're simple compounds with a hydrogen and a halogen bonded together. When we add these to alkenes, we once again wind up with major and minor products. Here's the reaction of propene and hydrogen bromide. Oxidation of alkenes is an interesting thing, because if you haven't already seen it, it might be nearly impossible to predict what was coming. So the best thing to do is simply jump in and have a look-see, and that's what we're going to do. Before we can do that though, we need to talk briefly about what it means for something to be oxidised. Simply put, when we oxidise anything, we're adding oxygen onto it. Oxidation reactions require an oxidant, which is also sometimes called an oxidising agent. For this reaction, we use the bright purple permanganate iron, which is MnO4-. We also use water in this reaction. You might sometimes see this in the form of potassium permanganate, KmNO4. And now for the exciting oxidation of the alkene we've picked, ethene. This special molecule we've formed is called a diol. This name comes from the fact that it has two OH molecules attached to the carbon atoms, which means it's basically a double alcohol. The name of this diol is ethane 1, 2, diol. Note especially that it's ethane, not ethan. Look closely at the way we've drawn the far left OH molecule on this diol. See how we've written OH as HO in this case? Why have we done that? The reason is that the carbon atom is never bonded to the H, it's always bonded to the O. That means that we're forced to write the OH as HO. This is a very pedantic thing to do, but it makes the structure a lot clearer and means you're less likely to lose marks. In general, you need to know that Alkenes plus water plus an oxidizing agent react to produce diols. Alkenes can also undergo combustion in the same way that alkanes can, forming no organic products. For alkenes, this is usually incomplete combustion. Phew, that rounds up alkenes for us, but let's not forget about alkynes. Alkynes, remember these contain a triple bond between carbons, can only undergo one kind of reaction. This is an addition reaction, and it happens very similarly to how it does with alkenes. One bond of the triple bond is broken, and reactants, hydrogen or halogens, are added to what is now an alkene. This alkene can then undergo further reactions. In general, you need to know that alkynes plus hydrogen react to produce alkenes, and alkynes plus halogens react to produce haloalkenes.